is Josie, and it's time for another Pop Snark. We talk about everything from the low brow to the high brow, as long as your eyebrows are on fleek. And this week, I am sipping on my favorite, is it a Trinidadian beverage? Piedrox, which the local Trini restaurant near me finally had in stock after like a year of living here in Houston. And some Apple Crown Royal. Clink, 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 clink. Clank, sip on it. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you are sipping on this week. So, this week's pop snack is going to be a little short. My family just left after being in my house for a week. <sighs> it was a good time, but girl, I love living by myself. <laughs> really, really early in the morning, I am headed to Charleston, South Carolina, where I'll be sitting on a Google panel about amplifying black voices with Cat Black, Quinta of BuzzFeed, DeRay, um, the young man from the Young Turk. I'm super duper excited, mainly because the women on the panel are just awesome. Oh, and DeRay of the social activist of Twitter fame. I'm super excited. You are in Charleston, South Carolina. I will leave a link down below for you to RSVP and see you. Like, well, I'm gonna get this video up either late tonight or tomorrow morning, so. Whatever, I'm gonna see you tonight, I guess. Also, you can purchase your Stay Blessed and Unbothered mug at shop.smartbrowngirl.com. We also have Smart Brown Girl mugs. We have a Stay Blessed and Unbothered t-shirt and Smart Brown Girl t-shirts, obviously. So, supporting via the shop also helps me to produce more Smart Brown Girl content. Also, in another way to help finance the Smart Brown Girl thing while keeping my integrity, I have launched the Smart Brown Girl Bookstore. I also recently, this past Sunday, put up my 2015 book list. I am packing Bad Feminist Read on the Plane with me in the morning, and I am super excited to finally launch a book club next month. So check all that out in the description box down below. And let's get into this pop snark. First off, Amelia Boynton Robinson, civil rights activist and organizer who helped with the Selma March. She was also featured in the Selma movie. She was played by Lorraine Toussaint, passed away at the age of 104. So definitely rest in peace to a marvelous smart brown girl who definitely paved the way for the rest of us. The most unfortunate news happened this morning in Roanoke, Virginia, where a shooter, and I, I had this thing about saying shooters' names because I just feel like you should, we should never really exalt the shooter. We should always exalt the victims. A former employee of a local news station shot and killed two of his co-workers and then later shot and killed himself. Uh, but the even crazier part is that he taped himself doing it and then posted the video to Facebook. The video is here on YouTube. I am not going to link it. I did watch it because I'm stupid. And it really is just one of the most horrifying. Like, I think it, I've been reading these pieces as of late that what comes to kind of the assault by police on black bodies, um, how we have picked up a fetish at watching people be assaulted and die, essentially. And I think there's definitely some credibility to that. And I'm actually at fault of that, too, because I should have never... I don't even know why I clicked on the video. Like, I really just shouldn't have been... It's not something I should have been interested in seeing. But I was just so flabbergasted that this guy had the gall to actually record himself. Unfortunately, he was black, um, and so this is probably going to be used as an attack on Black Lives Matter. This shooter's actions are not indicative of the Black Lives Matter campaign that was started by three black women who were trying to champion for the rights of black men and women who are facing violence by people of authority in general. What I personally think, and I don't even know if we're ready for this conversation yet or not, but I you know, I, you guys have asked me about the soda buyers and the Nashis of the world and hidden colors. And I'm just vehemently against this. And I almost feel like this shooting is more in line of the propaganda that's pushed forth via that kind of hidden colors, blame everything on somebody else, larger the black woman. Um, that kind of whole hidden colors. Ill. At some point, we're going to have to have that conversation. It's going to be real complicated as fuck. But I'm not here for anybody trying to place this on Black Lives Matter. But we can, it might just be a hidden colors thing. That's my shade. For the Theocracy news. There has been a hack of the cheating website, Ashley Madison. Now, girl, I ain't never heard of this website a day in my life until like two weeks ago. Actually, Gawker been talking about it for a minute. And I just never clicked on it because all I saw was pictures of white men's and I just wasn't interested. But as it turns out, on this cheating website, several high-profile 
men have had accounts and were active with their accounts on this website, including none other than the already sexually perverted Josh Duggar of the 19 Kids and Counting family. He is the oldest boy of the Duggar family, and he not only recently was accused of sexually assaulting his sisters and his sister's young friends, and now he's entered into rehab because he is addicted to porn. And what's really unfortunate is his wife, who also grew up in the same sect, she's not very well educated, and she's been trained to essentially stand by her husband and be the best wife she can be to uplift her husband. And I do wonder kind of what is going through her mind now. Like, how does she internalize this if she's already being told that she has a responsibility to keep her husband, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't even, I don't know how to term it. It's just kind of weird when you get into these religions where the women are so taught to be subjugated to their husbands that when the husbands falter, is she going to put blame on herself? Does she really have any options? Not that I'm saying she needs to divorce them or that should be her course of action, but I do wonder what... Is anybody really concerned? I think her name is like Ann or Anna. Is anybody really concerned about her well-being and more specifically her mental health? Example of white mediocrity, you know. YouTube gives the best examples. The popular YouTube vlogging couple, Sam and Nia. Girl, you know there's a whole other side of YouTube that I don't even care for. I don't particularly watch a whole lot of vlogs. I know a lot of my audience says I have homegirls who are rolling to the vlog scene. I don't even be watching my own vlogs. I ain't even uploaded it. Matter of fact, I got a vlog channel, I'll link it here, but I have not uploaded a video in a month because I'm shady. But, girl, this dude, first of all, how do you announce to your wife that she's pregnant? Like, how does that happen? That is just, like, entirely absurd to me that you can, you would think taking a pregnancy test and dipping it in the toilet where she has peed but not flushed is going to render an accurate pregnancy test. You're dumb. Now, not only are they dumb and not only are they out there for the coin, like, look, we know you just want to be internet famous. We get it. When you white, that ain't nothing but being ultra Christian and posting up daily vlogs on YouTube, girl. I wish it was as easy for me as it is for you, but I can't hate the swindle. However, now he's been caught as being on the Ashley Madison website and also having a very active account. And so, Gawker's just going to have a heyday trying to rip this man down. I ain't really got much interest in seeing either him or Josh Duggar's demise or anybody that's caught on the website. I'm just like, how dumb are y'all to think that there would be, never be any fallout for participating in a website that allows you to cheat on your wife? Like, bruh. And better news, Sandra Bland has had a street named after her that leads to Prairie View a and M. The county officials are hoping that it is a reminder of all that she has endured and the fight for our basic human rights. I'm very happy that Waller County has now named a street after Sandra Bland. Much respect to her. Serena Williams, because she's just dominating 2015 and all her awesomeness, New York Times Magazine wrote an exceptional write up. And whether or not you are a Serena Williams or a tennis fan in general, this article is a must read for the Smart Brown Girls because the author went through great lengths to kind of explain the nuances of what it means to exalt yourself as black excellence and the expectation of us always having to be three times as good as our opponents and still not being able to revel in our achievements without people questioning where our humility is or telling us to pipe down and not be confident in what we have clearly achieved through our own merits. I just feel like the article speaks to what so much of us as black women and men go through in life. I will link it down below. You need to read it tonight while you sip it on your drag. Even if you just drinking some water, girl, or you drinking some green tea. Sip your green tea and read that article and then be inspired to be black excellence in real life. On King, I believe he like writes for a daily cause, daily cause. He's also a social activist that's very popular on Twitter. My man. We've been having conversations about whether Sean King was black or not for a minute. Like, every time somebody mentions his name in real life, we're always like, so is he black or not? He looked like John B. And we all know John B. a white boy. But Sean King is very, very active in just the overall civil rights, Black Lives Matter campaigning. There's been some questionable things that have happened around him previously. But 
recently, Brett Bar, I don't even feel like correctly pronounced his website's name. They're conservative, they're racist as fuck, and they thought they had gotten their hands on some juicy information, and they're calling Sean King the Rachel Dole is all part two. Except for, Sean King has never lied about his race. They are saying that Sean King has li lied to get a scholarship to Morehouse, which is where he matriculated and that he's lied about being biracial. So Sean replied to the, t the article that then went to trend, went trending on Twitter, and it's, it's, it was, all it really was was to divert from the actual Black Lives Matter campaign. This is how you know that us protesting, us being active, us speaking out on social media is impacting because white people is so in their feelings that they are finding every little way to take someone down. Now, I, I was I was humored. I'm not even gonna lie because when Sean did that like 36 tweets, like and he one two three, he made a point in each one and still through his points in directly addressed whether he was black or not. I was like, my man is hilarious. But I also get what he was saying. His whole point is that he comes from a family. He doesn't talk specifically about his race because it's a messy story and he doesn't want to involve his family and his public advocacy like basically against their will. It's like you can be popular and of some notoriety, but that doesn't mean that your family members want to be involved in that either. And so when he finally wrote his article for Daily Cost, he did say, you know, the man that is listed on his on his the man that is listed on his birth certificate, who is a white man, is not his biological father. His mother had an affair with the black man who is his father. He doesn't know him and he is therefore biracial, which is not an unbelievable story. He hasn't been coming in and telling the blatant lies of like his parentage and his history as did Rachel Dolezal and I feel like she really really messed up this conversation around race and gave white supremacists way too much room to have conversations about how we identify in the black community. In more race news, 12 black women were kicked off a Napa Valley wine tour train for laughing while black because some white woman complained about how loud their laughter was. Now, if you in a large group together and y'all all laugh at the same time, and I'm not talking about like no young folk, and even if they were young, it don't really matter, but it was grandmas in the group. It was a book club group. They might have been cracking jokes and all laughing at the same time, but I mean, that's natural. Like, then change your car. Like, how do they get kicked off for enjoying themselves? You're on a wine tour. You're drinking wine, girl. Listen to Diddy quiet time with your wine, then go to like, get yourself a private sommelier to come to your house and give you a wine tasting. Don't go on a tour of Napa Valley on a wine train and then get mad because people are enjoying themselves. CEO of the train company ended up having to apologize to the women and owning up to his company's mishandling of the situation. Girl. Twitter was lit with the hashtag laughing while black. Candy Burris, girl, congratulations to her and Todd on their pregnancy. She le released a picture of her and her baby bub looking super cute. I'm just wondering, is Riley somewhere in some corner mad with Mama Joyce? And that's it for this week in Pop Snark. I will see you guys all next week as I cover a bunch of smart brown girl Pop Snark videos throughout the week. I'm excited, are you? If you have any tips for any topics, post them down below and shop that smartbrowngirl.com. Get your mug so you can sip along with me too. Deuces. Mm -hmm.